Tracking people, it's your man, Cousin T, and today I am doing a special response to the Master Teacher BGS If Morris uh, video uh, that he produced as a follow-up to a previous video regarding the chat GPT um, release. <clears throat> and so for all of those uh, who may not be familiar, chat GPT stands for basically when we say chat, that's an interface uh, back and forth, uh, GPT representing generative pre-trained transformer. So what that basically breaks down to is uh, it generates a response to an inquiry. So an inquiry is basically what you, the user, inputs uh, into this particular platform and it generates a response in the form of uh, processing the data provided uh, by its storehouse of information. We'll get to that in a sec. And then producing output, which is the transformation of user input, the processing of its data sets, and the generation of a response in the form of output. Okay? So this most current release of the chatbot program uh, is open AIs which is the parent company um, this is their their 3.5 release uh, within the family of large language models and this particular one is fine-tuned with both supervised meaning there's a human on the back end uh, of this platform and reinforcement learning techniques so, so basically what reinforcement learning techniques means is that Whenever uh, an inquiry comes back, um, it is, is put out in the form of output from this particular chatbot program, um, it is given a positive reinforcement in the form of digital awards, okay? So you can Google what digital awards are or whatever. But moving forward, the reason why a lot of um, conversation is being had about this particular program uh, is because of its ability to uh, produce uh, thesis papers uh, and antithesis papers, multiple positions uh, on a variety of subject matter uh, in seconds of you know a person inputting an inquiry into this particular program. So for example, you've got PhD students who are um, you know, requesting this program to produce papers uh, that, and the papers that are coming back as a result uh, are, you know, collegiate level, academic scholarship level uh, papers that could presumably pass uh, a, a particular uh, thesis examination. So that implicates that the level of quality and fidelity of these um, chatbot uh, linguistic models has increased uh, a lot over the course of time. Now, as uh, BGS already mentioned in his uh, video uh, covering this subject, the concern is to what's considered to be the knowledge uh, industries like uh, law, for example. This uh, program is capable of producing law briefs uh, you know, obviously researching law history and accessing law libraries in order to present uh, a defense for a potential defendant and or dispute various legal claims. Also, other knowledge-based industries uh, that this potential uh, program has the ability to disrupt include the, uh, the, the worlds and spaces of computer programmers uh, altogether. And in that, um, there are so many uh, user case studies uh, of this particular program having the ability to error correct a lot of uh, programming language um, and, and sets that programmers have put into the, you know, the chatbot um, GPT platform and spitting out a functional, uh, you know, code that, you know, the programmer is then able to, you know, capture from uh, the platform and then plug in to their programming model accurately and in a way that functions 
however the uh, original programmer intended uh, the code to function. So those are just two examples of the knowledge-based industries that this program has the potential to disrupt. But for me, uh, my purview is that of uh, neuropsychology and in particular the understanding of consciousness. And so a lot of my research uh, in the last, say, four years or so has been focused on the understanding of quantum computing platforms and in that it uses a lot of uh, principles and dynamics that are similar to that of systems that both non-local and uh, local uh, conscious expressions uh, employ. So basically what I'm saying is that um, without going too deep into you know, the quantum computing realm, um, the dynamics that allow for the data uh, to be encoded, processed, and read off uh, of quantum computing qubits uh, is similar to the dynamics that uh, allow for information and or data to be processed by uh, human neurons and ultimately the structures of synaptic connections. So uh, I've skipped over a lot <laughs> of details here with the science, but basically how this relates to the primary subject of the release of chat uh, GPT is that the technology that OpenAI uh, is producing and refining and progressing ultimately has been used uh, to create qubit uh, of configurations that were uh, responsible for the teleportation of data from outer space uh, to from one um, semiconducting uh, chip to another semiconducting chip here on planet Earth. Uh, I'll link the, the article in the description for this. But basically what, what is being said is that at the quantum realm, teleportation is possible. And it has been proven by science through uh, the use of um, AI iterations of a process that produced these uh, qubits. Okay, so basically, <laughs> in a nutshell, when the human user uh, types in an inquiry in, in an expectation of receiving an answer from uh, the AI platform, the AI then has to perform multiple iterations. Uh, when we talk about specifically the quantum based AI, now we're adding the fact we're removing the factoring of time. So it's no longer uh, linear iterations that are being performed by this AI. Uh, and so they're not bound by the linguistic limitations of time, as in uh, the language uh, uh, of English, for example. English is only 1,300 to 1,500 years old. And, and so uh, the usage and the potential iterations of its performance uh, has not been refined uh, to the level that an AI, uh, you know, cycling multiple, multiple, multiple hundreds of thousands of iterations uh, of language models can perform in seconds. So you compare the usage of English, for example, across the span of uh, you know 1,500 years, uh, to which a language-based AI bot. <clears throat> can cycle the language, you know, 100,000, maybe even a, a million years. So the richness of the uh, context uh, allows it to compress the results in a way that progresses the answer uh, and the fidelity or accuracy of an answer um, to the point of creating a solution that's not bound by time. Now, all of that uh, is the basis for a completely different conversation in and of itself. But just uh, for the sake of 
this uh, video response, I'm going to give you an example of how you know Google engineers already uh, sort of identify this issue and this this sort of gap uh, in comprehension. And here is the solution that is uh, proposed by uh, Ray Kurzweil. Listen to this. Uh, so, but we we create this tool basically to enhance ourselves. I mean, we want to advance technology, uh, and so we created uh, these machines that can go way past us. Uh, the way to do that is to actually bring that, a that intelligence into ourselves. And during the 2030s, we're going to be able to enhance our own intelligence by bringing AI into ourselves. So it's not just going to be humans versus machines. They're going to be together and we're going to be more uh, advanced because we're going to, we'll have AI inside but us. I can hold a smartphone in my hand, which gives me access to the... Everything. Yes, it does It does that somewhat. But but isn't that the same thing? I, except I don't. it doesn't require neurosurgery for me to gain access to the... Well, you don't have to use neurosurgery. I mean, there's ways to, to do this. You have ways? <laughs> you, have, you have to yes. do it with your fingers. And we have ways. <laughs> Um, I've, I've done some reading about nanobots. Are, are, is that ready for prime time or not? No, but I believe it will be ready in the 2030s. And these um, are t small, they're basically small machines that live in your brain and communicate with the internet. Exactly. And so that's going to make us smarter. Now, if you look at my price performance of computation, it, it, it continues and we can actually talk about what these future computers will look like. So this is this is computation per second per dollar. Right, so constant dollar. Per constant dollar. And that's been something that has grown exponentially over the past hundred years, basically. Yeah. So basically BGS, uh, as we discussed in a previous conversation, uh, they're no longer producing computing platforms for human uh, humans 1.0, <laughs> so to speak. They're producing, um, well, the state of the art of computing platforms is progressing towards computers for the use of AI. <clears throat> now, in a conversation at a conference with uh, uh, Sam Altman, who's, a who's the CEO of OpenAI, he said those words, he used those words verbatim, and I'm going to uh, present that clip right here. How would you define AGI, and how do you think you'll know uh, yeah, when we, I should have defined when that we earlier. met it? It's a great point. I think there's like a lot of valid definitions to this, but uh, for me, um, AGI is basically the equivalent of a median human that you could like, you know, hire as a coworker. Um, so, and then they, they could like say do anything that you'd be happy with a remote coworker doing, like just behind a computer, um, which includes like you know learning how to go be a doctor, learning how to go be a very competent coder, like there's a lot of stuff that a median human is capable of getting good at. And I think one of the skills of an AGI is not any particular milestone, but the, the meta skill of learning to figure things out and that it can go decide to get good at whatever you need. Um, so for me, like that's that's kind of like AGI. Uh, and then super intelligence is when it's like smarter than all of humanity put together. Thanks. So basically, we have multiple uh, trajectories with the state of the art playing out right now. But uh, for the sake of time, um, I'll go deeper into those different trajectories on my Patreon side, on the higher level of my Patreon side. But for now, just to wrap up this particular response uh, to BGS Ipmore's presentation, I'm going to say this. This, this central uh, trajectory is where I see this going. So first, obviously, we have human 1.0, which I believe ultimately is the best form, <laughs> uh, you know, for various reasons. Uh, but <clears throat> in the near future, uh, human 1.0 is going to be relegated to homesteading um, and existence in a, a more natural uh, environment and ecosystem. Then you have human 1.5, uh, which is a part of the transhuman movement, which will start to uh, ingratiate and uh, uh, bring in, like uh, Kurzweiler mentioned, a lot of uh, the technological advancements uh, that allow the human to interface with um, AGI, including ro robotics and nanobots. 
And so I think that a lot of people who are considered to be digital nomads right now will be uh, uh, adopting a lot of the sort of enhanced technology, like augmented uh, reality. And they'll be in and about traveling to and from various uh, classical cities and uh, what I refer to as neoplexus. One would be an example of what's going on in Dubai right now, which, uh, you know, they're becoming a more techno-centric and um, a technologically forward space. But also here domestically, in the with the example of the former Walmart executive uh, desiring to create his own city. Here's an example of that. Walmart billionaire Mark Lore has launched a jaw-dropping project to build a $400 billion utopian city in the middle of the American desert. Here are the details. CNN reports that recently retired Walmart billionaire Mark Lore announced plans to build a brand new super city in the middle of the American desert for $400 billion. Lore said the plan is to construct a utopian city that will be very clean and green, built around the dream of social equality. Famous architect house Bjarke Engels Group has been hired to design the city, which Laura has named Talasa. Renderings of the plan show nature-friendly architecture covered in foliage and people playing in large parks that crisscross the city. The plans also show many green technologies built into the city. Lore says his team will be meeting very soon with state officials in one of the U.S.'s less populated regions with the aim of receiving the city's first residence by 2030. So obviously um, the year 2030 is um, a large target year for the implementation of a lot of these systems. And so uh, with a lot of these systems will come the rise of human 2.0 proper, which uh, would be a form of cyborg or, um, you know, the use of exoskeletons to go along with or complement the, um, the, the speed of production and capacity, computational capacity uh, that comes with the merging of um, human neuro, neuro, neurology with uh, the nanobot technology. Beyond that, we, we've already seen examples of what would be considered human 3.0, which would be all-out designer uh, babies or uh, the result of gene editing to a point in which uh, humans would be able to uh, withstand the rigors of uh, extraterrestrials or space travel. And, um, you know, the final result ultimately would be specific types of um, beings that are capable of withstanding uh, high pressures, exposure, prolonged exposure to ra uh, radiation, depending on where in the cosmos, uh, you know, they'll be traveling to. But at this point, we have um, 4.0. Uh, and with this particular iteration, uh, it can no longer be referred to as human. And so what we see is a complete, you know, full circle to what the uh, ancient ancestors used to uh, interface with you know, with the use of various masks and uh, ceremonies and rituals. Um, and at that point, the modes of communication will be so different uh, from uh, each other. We'll have to reestablish, uh, you know, a new language to be able to interface with this version of existence. So, like I said, I go into further detail uh, about this on the high levels of my Patreon, but just as to issue a response to uh, BGS's video, which I will link down below. Let me know if you have any questions or comments or your own thoughts on uh, these particular technological advancements that we're experiencing right now in our lifetime. As always, this is your man, Cousin T, a.k.a. the Alpha Wingman, saying stay sharp and mission-focused. Later.